Most games have the machine pistol archetype, but Halo's SMG stood out for a lot of reasons. Not only did it have a nice little compact and charismatic frame, it was also the poster child for Halo's dual wielding mechanic, a system that the SMG would actually long outlive. There's been many iterations, models, and interpretations of the SMG throughout Halo's life cycle, and I felt it would be fun to go through them. If you find yourself enjoying the video, a like or a share would be appreciated, and to subscribe if you haven't already. I swear I'm not begging. Following the success of the first Halo, Bungie aimed to make a sequel that was bigger than what came before, with an expanded sandbox and new systems and ways to engage with that sandbox. A common joke among fans of the first game was that the rifle functioned more like a close-ranged SMG, with the pistol functioning more like a true ranged rifle. For Halo 2, the assault rifle was modified into the battle rifle, the go-to ranged weapon for the game. And the functionality of Halo 1's assault rifle was given to a new weapon, the submachine gun. It's a small weapon with a dark color scheme, folding stock, and folding pistol grip on the front. Magazines are attached to the side of the weapon, and it is completely caseless, meaning it leaves no spent shells on the ground while firing. How is the SMG mechanically? The SMG has a 60-round magazine with a fast and snappy reload, and while not being great at killing shielded targets, it's good for controlling unshielded close-range targets, and due to it being a sandbox item with the dual-wielding mechanic, it can be paired with another gun in your hand to mix and match strengths. You could combine a plasma rifle with the SMG for close-range domination. You could use two SMGs if you want to be a bit flashy. You could combine it with a needler if you're feeling really silly, and so on. Due to its short range, it was an excellent starting weapon for social game types, while the battle rifle was reserved for competitive game types. Some interesting pre-release trivia is that the dual-wielded SMG seen at E3 2003 was actually a bit of developer trickery. Technically, under the hood, this was one gun, and when you pull the right trigger, it would actually fire both weapons at the same time. It was functionally fake dual wielding, and it got the job done. The moment that Chief held an SMG in each hand was an instant crowd pleaser. The SMG also had a silenced version that, like many things in Halo 2, unfortunately didn't make the final cut. A couple of years later, when Halo 2 Vista released on PC, the silenced SMG was made available in the map editor to mess around with. Overall, the Halo 2 SMG is a charismatic, yet odd weapon in the sandbox. On its own, it's not nearly as mechanically interesting as the first Halo's assault rifle, and when dual wielded, there are arguably better weapons to combo, such as the Magnum with the plasma pistol. This lack of place in the sandbox is something the SMG would actually struggle with throughout the series' history, but its memorable design and role as the poster child of the dual wielding system would ensure that it accrued a small but loyal cult following that would stick with the gun for years to come. Halo 3 would be the second and final Halo game in the series to feature the dual wielding system. And it's easy to see why. By this time, Bungie was really starting to struggle with getting the dual wielding system to work due to the way that it affected player behaviors online, restricting their ability to melee and throw grenades, which are two very important parts of Halo combat, as well as affecting the developer's ability to design new weapons. It was a problem in Halo 2, but it really started to affect Bungie during Halo 3. The SMG makes its return, sporting a similar model, albeit with some fancy glowing lights that contrasted nicely against the dark color of the metal, a signature for most UNSC weapons. Interestingly, its stock appears to be extended when laying on the ground, but in the player's hands, the stock is collapsed. The SMG received a variety of stat buffs to its damage and accuracy, but as a whole, I'd say this was an incarnation that really struggled to find a place in Halo 3 sandbox. 
on its own, it simply wasn't as effective as the returning assault rifle was. And by dual wielding it, you couldn't melee or deploy equipment without dropping your second weapon. More so than Halo 2, dual wielding in Halo 3 locked the player into a very specific playstyle that limited your ability to engage with the external sandbox. Because of this, it was just wiser to stick with automatic weapons like the assault rifle if you needed a bullet hose for close range combat. There isn't much of a reason to ever honestly stick with the Halo 3 SMG outside of combat flavor, when the Halo 3 assault rifle is much easier to use and frees up the player to use melee attacks and deploy equipment. The SMG in Halo 3 was a bit redundant, and it was in danger of becoming lost unless it reinvented itself and reinvention was on the horizon. Following Halo 3, the SMG had a chance at redemption, with multiple factors working in its favor. The next FPS game in the series would be a spin-off that ditched the dual-wielding system, featured a smaller but more focused weapon sandbox, and had the player starring not as a Spartan, but as an ODST. Orbital Drop Shock Troopers, known for using the SMG as their primary weapons. Bungie took the SMG back to the drawing board and reinvented it into something rather interesting. The model itself is just the Halo 3 model, but with many attachments to make it a bit more tactical looking, such as a silencer, side-mounted flashlight, and fancy holographic sight. While the silencer is just for aesthetic purposes, the ammo was actually brought down from 60 rounds to 48 rounds. In order to make sure that this ranged, fully automatic weapon didn't upset Halo's balancing, the weapon was turned into a jack-of-all-traits, master-of-none kind of weapon. It can be used at a range, but there's no headshot multiplier, and the aggressive upwards kick meant that it couldn't be fired at a range for long. It could be used at medium range, but it wouldn't be quite as good against shielded targets encouraging the player to consider plasma weapons. It may not be the best in any category, but the fact that it can be used in all categories is interesting. It's not particularly powerful in any situation, but the multi-purpose way that it was designed and the strong tactical presentation of the weapon makes me empathize with players who do choose to hold on to it. It's an interesting version of the SMG. Definitely my favorite design in the series, and one that would go on to be remembered for years to come, for the extremely clever way that it was designed. It's an ODST's best friend, and we'd be seeing it again in the future. Following ODST, the SMG would take a backseat for a few years. It made no appearance in Halo Reach, was only briefly considered for Halo 4, according to some concept art. And outside of a brief appearance in the twin-stick shooter Spartan Assault, things were quiet. But it wouldn't be until 2014's remaster of Halo 2 that the SMG would see a massive return to the series. Halo 2 Anniversary is a pretty fantastic remake. Within the time frame given, Saber Interactive did a solid job recapturing the spirit of the original Halo 2 campaign, and not straying too far from the original vision. Though there are some areas where the remaster did deviate from the original game, and the SMG in this remaster is quite different looking. While the original Halo 2 design was very dark, very rounded, and very small and compact, not trying to draw attention to itself, the Halo 2 Anniversary SMG was very bright, very blocky, and very greebled up and detailed. It's especially strange when you really start looking at the details. It's not so much one big thing, and more like a combination of small things, such as the small foldable grip at the front no longer seems foldable for some reason, or the collapsible stock at the back no longer connecting to the pistol grip. When talking to folks in the community, such as Rin, who are more knowledgeable on these subjects, she couldn't quite figure out why Saber would deviate so heavily from the original model, considering how other original models were quite faithful adaptations. The Halo 2 Anniversary campaign model would even go on to be used in the cancelled Russian free-to-play Halo game, Halo Online. The sound effects for the SMG were also sourced from a Thompson submachine gun, which led to this being a much louder version of the SMG than ever heard before.
In the original Halo 2, the player's avatar would adjust the gun to be more comfortable on the screen depending on if you looked up or down. It was a cool attention to detail, but this was bugged in a 2018 update for Halo 2 Anniversary. Now the SMG is frozen in the center of the screen and doesn't move or adjust at all no matter if you look up or down. While the campaign version of the remastered SMG wasn't particularly faithful to the original design, the multiplayer model was a different story with a much more faithful update to the original 2004 model. This new model was absolutely beautiful, and it's one of my favorite interpretations of the SMG in the series. Interestingly, its empty reload animation is actually animated too slowly and so the animation can be interrupted if you just keep the trigger held down during a reload. This isn't the end of the Halo 2 Anniversary multiplayer, though, because it also features an ODST variant, and it can be dual-wielded, like the standard SMG. And also, yes, the reload animation can be cut off on this one, too. With Halo 2 Anniversary reintroducing gamers to the SMG, it was time for the next mainline entry in the series, Halo 5 Guardians, to introduce us to a new model of SMG, the M20 submachine gun. It retains the foldable grip and collapsible stock, and like the Halo 2 Anniversary campaign model, this SMG was less round and was a bit more blocky and greebled up with detail. And instead of a side-loaded magazine, it's reloaded quite a bit like a real-life P90 from the top of the gun, leading many people in the community to just call it the Space P90 as a way to differentiate it from previous SMGs in the series. Halo 5 is a Halo game with a very different approach to sandbox balancing. Instead of sporting an arcade style of shooter and sandbox design, it goes for more of a twitch shooter approach, which was quite popular in the early to mid 2010s. Like most weapons in Halo 5, it has a headshot multiplier and aiming down the sights, and when you aim down the sights, the recoil of the weapon is reduced and the spread of the shots is tightened up. It's less of a roll-based arcade weapon and more of a comfortably fast fire rate automatic for those who prefer that playstyle. Paired up with a good perk in Warzone like faster reloads or quicker movement, and it really shines. Well, it's not how I prefer Halo to be designed. The incredible animation work and snappy sound effects make this a weapon that I don't mind running around with on the rare occasion that I need to play Halo 5 for a video. The SMG comes with a variety of sights and attachments that can be found in loot boxes and used in the Warzone game type or used in custom games. There's a lot in this game, so let's go over them, starting with the sights. The first sight is the standard one found on the stock SMG. It's reliable, clear, and easy to use. Next is the projection sight. It's most useful for close to medium range engagements and reduces recoil when aiming down the sight. The recon sight is your standard first-person shooter red dot sight. It extends the range of the weapon when aiming down the sight and allows it to be useful past normal ranges by reducing recoil. The COG sight is an advanced targeting sight akin to the target finder attachment if you've ever played Call of Duty. When aiming down the sights, it highlights hostiles in red and gives you a read on their health situation. The Morph Sight is reverse-engineered Promethean technology that allows for a clear view of the target when aiming down the sights, as well as reducing recoil. The Hybrid Sight is an experimental attempt to combine Covenant and human technology. It provides a fancy holographic pop-up when aiming down the sights and reduces recoil. With the sights out of the way, let's move on to the gun attachment, starting with the suppressor. You know how this one works. It muffles gunshots and ensures that you don't show up on the minimap when firing at the expense of range. The extended mag does what it says on the tin. It extends your magazine bullet count and lets you fire for longer. 
The long barrel extends the SMG's effective range, allowing it to be reliably used at longer ranges. The laser sight tightens up the SMG's bullet spread, making it much easier to control when firing from the hip. The stabilizer jets remove upwards recoil kick, which when combined with something like a recon sight can turn the SMG into quite an accurate gun at a range. The kinetic bolt attachment gives the user increased damage against vehicles and increased knockback against them. The sound dampener attachment is rather redundant since it silences your shots but can't be mixed and matched with sights of your choosing. There's no real reason to ever use this. The threat marker attachment can ping enemies through walls when they take damage, allowing you to track your prey if they're able to sprint away and escape your gunfire. And finally, the energy bayonet gives the user instant melee kills essentially removing the need for an energy sword or shotgun in your pocket. You thought the Halo 5 SMG would be the end of the road, didn't you? Well, it normally would be the end, if it weren't for the insanely interesting year 2020 had for Halo. Over the course of that year, the Master Chief Collection made its way to PC, and when ODST arrived on PC in September, Halo 3 got a surprise addition of ODST's weapon arsenal. The whole weapon roster was backported into Halo 3 on the Master Chief Collection, and is available to spawn in Forge and can even be found in certain game types and maps. The silenced SMG is the only fully automatic weapon in Halo 3 that has a scope, and like the original ODST, for balancing reasons, it features no headshot multiplier, has strong upwards kick so it's not too useful at long range, and lacks the dual-wield function. For years, the ODST SMG was only available in Halo 3 via modding, but now it was part of the game through official developer support. And it's beautiful to see multiplayer Spartans using this gun. The SMG may not have ever found a solid identity for itself, but the strength of its presentation led to it being a cult classic Halo weapon. It would endure in spite of its inability to land on a roll for itself. The SMG, especially its ODST variant, is beloved. And with the future of Halo on the horizon, one has to wonder, if the SMG were to return, what form would it take? Would we see the classic machine pistol style take like Halo 2? Or a more tactical, suppressed style like ODST? What's your favorite incarnation of the SMG? What would you like to see me cover next? Feel free to check the description for my Discord so that we can continue the conversation over there. And with that being said, I'll see you all on the next video.